so it was today that Pakatan Harapan presented the alternative budget. That's right. Could you just tell us what are the highlights of the alternative budget? I think there are, there are perhaps uh, two or three highlights. Um, number one, of course, the uh, the key move to zero rise the GST for now. Why do we zero rise it? I think the the, the the term that has been used is we abolish GST, but that that will come uh, uh, with difficulty for businesses because they have just invested millions or billions of ringgit in installing a new accounting system to cater for GST and you tell them now we're throwing away GST they have to install back all their old systems they're going to go crazy so the best way to do it is essentially to zeroize it uh, relieve the pressure on the economy on prices and uh, on the uh, impact of the declining ringgit for this moment uh, that's a key effort uh, how do we recoup back the differences in cost uh, that would be through the practice of uh, good governance, uh, open tenders, uh, and removal of corruption, waste stages, and so on. So those would be the bulk of the areas that we would do to recoup back the differences uh, in income collected from GST. Perhaps more important element of this is to refocus um, the um, economic policies on how it can benefit the less developed regions, in particular, East Malaysia. Now, one example that we cited was the uh, high-speed rail. The high-speed rail that is supposed to be worth approximately 40 billion ringgit that is uh, to be built to connect Kuala Lumpur and, uh, and Singapore. Now, how much value can a high-speed rail deliver for Malaysians? Now, we have got probably three dozen flights between Singapore and Kuala Lumpur on a daily basis that takes approximately an hour. The price for these flights is approximately anything between 100 ringgit to 300 ringgit each trip. Now, what, I, what we understand is for the high-speed rail, it's expected to take up to 400 ringgit to break even on one-way trip between KL and Singapore. Now, how much benefit will the high-speed high rail provide Okay, to Malaysians okay, by creating a high-speed rail that is on land that perhaps is, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes faster than if you fly. Compared to if you use this money and invest in Sabah and Sarawak where they don't even have a rail line. Uh, that's, that's the key element. Now, where is the next generation of growth going to come from for Malaysia? It is not going to come, the bulk of it isn't, shouldn't be trying, we shouldn't be trying to squeeze blood out of Peninsula Malaysia. Okay? When the rest of the country, like in Sabah and Sarawak, there's plenty of room to grow. Uh, and under such circumstances, growth rates are usually higher than more developed uh, parts of the nation. And we should allow opportunities for states in Sabah and Sarawak to grow. I mean, people who are professionals from Sabah and Sarawak often find that they have to come to Peninsula for work. And uh, what is left behind is uh, empty nest, old folks, and the economy isn't really growing in Sabah and Sarawak. And that results in uh, perpetuation of poverty and poor income uh, in Sabah and Sarawak. So, so our, our budget seeks to refocus the way we design our policies that tends to be uh, bank value centric to one that focuses on reducing inequality between the rural and the urban regions.